Y'all, I'm sitting here picking up some food from Applebee's. Don't worry, it's healthy. Okay, it's healthy. The calories is good. It's a very healthy meal. I don't feel like cooking or nothing until later on. But anyways, so I'm in the um, parking lot right now. And this is something that I think about constantly all the freaking time. And sometimes I'll be about to cry because I'm so passionate. I, girl, I was supposed to say girl because I know there's a lot of guys that watch my videos too. I feel like it is time for the nine to fivers to get their peace back get their peace back, start to get their time back, just start living again. Stop living for the big white man, big boss. I'm gonna say white man, although there is a lot of black CEOs now, but majority, you know, corporate America, Fortune 500, just be working for the white man. But anyway, working for the big boss, if y'all want me to change up my wording. Everybody get offended so easily these days. But anyways, I will never forget the breaking point to work in. Well, the breaking point for me when I was like, all right, it's time to go. I will never forget. I worked for a Fortune 500 company, mega bank, okay? Big bank, big bank, okay? <laughs> At the headquarters. I worked in the headquarters in desktop support. And uh, it was my first ever job. I worked uh, from home um, for a newspaper company. And, uh, but that's the only job I've ever had. I worked from home. It's just me, a computer. I have no coworkers. It's just me and the boss, right? And so, or you know, coworkers that I had to communicate with, communicate to, you know? So going from working at the newspaper company over to a Fortune 500 company in desktop support, not even an entry level position, I had some adjusting to do. It was so new to me. Everything about it was new. I, I don't know how to uh, interact with coworkers. I don't know what are the, the things I should do or shouldn't do. I don't know what it's like to go on lunch break. It was a lot of things that I had to learn. But my breaking point was one, traveling all the way to work. I traveled two hours to Tyson's, Virginia. I probably shouldn't have said that because y'all gonna look up the banks. <laughs> <laughs> y'all go look up the banks <laughs> but anyways i drove two hours to tyson's virginia and two hours back home this is with traffic you know rush hour traffic i get to work and y'all know uh, juggling a chronic disease like juvenile type 1 diabetes is not easy so i was already really sickly because my job came first i didn't come first my job came first so traveling there I remember sitting in the parking lot just dragging myself out of the car just knowing when I go to work it's just nothing but chaos disrespect and just you just get treated like a piece of boop. now I went to work one time and I was the little black girl working in tech on a team of 50 white men and Asian men and it was one other black woman on the team, but she, she did something else. So she wasn't like on my team, but she was in the meetings, but <laughs> she was older. And, um, I would never forget. I, I, I was, I was rocking it. Y'all was rocking it there. I was doing my thing, baby. I was running like senior level projects, just transforming things up in that joint. Like, like, like when my mind is onto something and I have a goal, baby, I'm gonna accomplish it. I was changing things up, up in there. Right. And so I think my manager's and all of them were feeling really threatened because I will never forget my mentor there. Um, and we talk to this day. He always, you know, reaches out and check up on me. And I do the same for him. And he always say, Paris, they feel threatened. Paris, they're acting like this because they feel threatened. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just working. I'm just working. I'm just working. And that was one of the reasons you're working so hard for the company, you're working so hard for yourself. And it's just like the disrespect. My manager one time told me uh, that I was talking ghetto. How the heck am I talking ghetto? He said, saying, gotcha. Okay, gotcha, is ghetto. He told me I need to stop talking ghetto. 
I heard a comment one time from a manager from a different company that told me that I needed to slick my curls down or wear my hair straight and maybe I will get a promotion. <laughs> I can't. Oh boy, I just wish I could find them. So I could be like, anyway, who the big boss now? Anyway. Anyway, let me humble myself. You need a job because I'm hiring. Get out of here. Get get on out of here. You need a job because I'm hiring. Ah! I wish I could flex so hard to those managers that disrespected me in my face. But what the Lord say? What the enemy meant for evil, God will work it out for my good. That's what he said. But anyways, those were like the few things. So working hard, they just boop in on you. <laughs> yeah, I don't cuss. I don't cuss. My friends would tell you that they have never heard a cuss word come out of my mouth. But anyways, let me continue. Let me continue. Let me continue. And so, and so just the the thought of just grinding not making money for real you living paycheck to paycheck still struggling you have limited time you have no time to do anything you go you wake up you go to work you come home you take care of your kids maybe homework cook dinner get your kids in bed and then you gotta do it over again and again and again the only time you have is maybe on a saturday but even then you're running errands maybe taking your kids to their activities and stuff doing laundry housework sunday if y'all holy 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 baby if you a child of the most high god you go to church and you may hang out with your church friends and church family and Go home and rest or maybe get some more um, chores done. But you have no time. And I remember being at work and just crying. I would never forget the, the I, I broke down at work like two times, three times. I broke down one time when my contractor called me and they were like, uh, yeah, we got word from your manager that they will not be extending your contract. I broke down because they played with me in my face. The second time I broke down was when I was, um, I told my uh, my mentor, the guy that always keeps me, you know, make sure you document Paris. Make sure you cross your, t cross your T's and dot your I's Paris. Make sure you uh, uh, paperwork, what he call it, paper trail, paper trail Paris. Cause they, they be after you when they feel, when white, I'm sorry y'all if y'all Caucasians but this is just the truth when those Caucasians are feeling threatened boy they be doing anything and everything just sneaky and sly and they just be trying to make sure it's just so hard for you right so the the second time the first time was when my contractor called and said yeah your your contract won't be extended and I broke down because I was like bro what the heck he's lying to me and playing in my face the second time I broke down was when I went in the back and I just wanted to tell my mentor, I was like, my manager told me that I should leave this job because of my chronic disease. He told me that I need to find a job with FMLA, although the job has FMLA. The problem is you got to work 12 months in order to get FMLA. I was only what, not even a year in. So I went back there and I said, yeah, he told me that I need to find a job with FMLA or I got to work at the service desk as an intern. I'm already in desktop support. I'm a contractor. Why would I, why would he make me go down to an intern and working at an entry level position? And then, and then I was like, then he told me uh, the ultim ultimatum, ultimatum, ultimatum is either work at the service desk as an intern or put in your two week notice. And let me tell you something. Let me tell I just told y'all the enemy, what the enemy meant for evil, God will work it out for your good, right? So I told him I'm putting in my two-week notice and I broke 
down crying because I said I can't do this corporate America stuff. That mess just plays with your mind. The mind games that come with working a nine to five has to be stopped. The only way we're going to stop it is by becoming our own boss. Or maybe, you know, it may feel a little better that you have something on the side that's producing income so that you're like, all right, if anything happened, I got something in my back pocket. Like me, trading was my was my thing. I said, if anything happens, I am producing money from the stock market that is not racist, that rewards me when I'm right, and don't reward me if I'm wrong. I am trading a strategy that gives me a guaranteed reliable income no matter what every single monday that i trade it's such an easy strategy and if you want um to learn more about this i have a free class um that i am having soon so just click the link in the description and sign up for my next class so you can learn more about this and i was like this is my this is literally like my security blanket, my safety blanket or whatever you want to call it, right? If anything happens, if I'm terminated because of my chronic disease, if I'm terminated because of, y'all already know, I ain't got to say it. <laughs> you know, they be plotting and planning on, on us. If I'm let go for any of those reasons, I have something in my back pocket to rely on like I'm good and I think more of us need to have something like that I really 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 do I really do so um and then the third time did I say the third time the first time was that contract the second time was when I went to my mentor and then the, the final time was when I I went to work and I remember I was backing up. I was parking outside. I didn't park in the garage this day. And I was like, bruh, I drove two hours. I am feeling so sick. I am getting treated like boo-boo at this job. And I'm turning things around. And the vice president is saying, I see you sitting in my seat. Keep going. And all these people are saying such amazing things about me. But my manager does not see it. And I'm constantly just getting torn down, belittled. Bruh, that stuff starts to feed into your mind. And you start to believe it a little bit. And I broke down, I called my mama and I said, mom, I can't do this no more. She said, you need to study your stocks. You need to study stock market trading and come home now. And that's what I did. Called out, drove two hours home, put on my stock podcast so I can learn. I'm like, I can learn. I may not learn the normal way like everyone else. I can't. You know, somebody tell me something, it's not going to seep into my mind. I'm not going to understand it right then and there. My learning, my learning style is a little different. I've always been very challenged in the learning area of things. I was in uh, uh, special ed classes in elementary and I was so behind. I didn't learn how to write my first sentence until I was 10 years old. And then my mom homeschooled me and my twin sister. But that was the start to all of that. I was like, I got to go. Like that was when I was super serious. I left that job, found a new job. And baby, I when I say this whole story is so crazy, I can't even fit it all in, a, in one video. I literally told my manager the next day at work when he told me either work at the service desk as an intern or putting on two week. I went, I went back to work the next day and slid my little letter on his desk and I said, consider this my two week notice. And I said, I'm going to need to take the two weeks to find me a new job. And I left. And I left. And so when I was home, and I hope you guys get some encouraging inspiration out of this part too. Like, I didn't have no job. That was my first job in tech. I didn't know how to get a second job in tech. But I knew I had the skills and I knew all the amazing things that I was able to do at my first tech job, right? I also worked at a Fortune 500. Like, I well respected, right? So I'm sitting, in, I'm sitting on the couch at home 
no job, no money coming in, bills coming in. <laughs> grown bills okay grown folk bills i had my own apartment um at that time i was 20 i was 20 i was 20 or i was 19 or 20 i moved out at 19 i was 20 at that point i believe and so bills coming in and i sat there on that couch i would never forget crisscross legs you know crisscross on the couch like this and i was just staring i actually have a picture i took a picture i will never forget it and the lord said you about to buy you a brand new house i said what i said i don't have no job i got bills coming in i have no money coming in you know you, you telling me that i'm about to buy a brand new house I couldn't believe it. So what? guess what I did? I got the heck up. This should be a whole nother video, but I'm going to keep it in this video. Got the heck up and went to these brand new homes that was like almost an hour away. And I went to the model home. I went to the model home. I had my baby with me. Uh, my god baby. Um, I told y'all in one of the videos I was a mommy for three years of, a, of twins. So I had one of the babies with me and I went to the model home and the lady asked me, she was like, she said, oh, um, are you looking to buy? I was like, yeah, I'm looking to buy. Can I go look, you know, throughout the house? And she was like, sure, yeah, go ahead. So I go, I'm looking throughout the house. I'm like, oh, this house is nice. This house is nice. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, look at this. Talking to my baby girl. Look, look, look. God, mommy's going to get you your own room. God, mommy's going to. God, mommy. God, mommy's going to. It's going to be better. It's going to get better. God, mommy's going to. It was such a sweet moment. And so I walk back down. And I go to the sales office. The lady asked me, are you looking to move and all that? When I say I asked her for the lender's information, I had to ask her for the packet. I had to ask her for all the stuff that they normally be breaking a neck to give someone. She looked at me because I'm 20 years old, look like a little baby or 21. I don't even know how old I was because I, I put the house under contract at 21, but I moved in at 22. So but anyways, I told her I had to ask her to put together the packet and the lender information and all of that stuff and she did not want to do it and she's going to say she asked me so when are you planning on moving in like when are you planning on buying and I heard the Lord say six months y'all need to get my food let me get my food let me get my food the Lord said six months. So I told the lady, I, I plan on purchasing in six months. To mind you, I have no job. I put in my two-week notice. I was fed up and done. I didn't know how to get no second job. I didn't, I didn't know any of that. That job I got through a program because in tech, you don't need a degree or any uh, certification. Well, you don't need no degree or experience to get into tech, right? All you need is the know-how you just need the skills you just need the knowledge and if you um want to break into tech too with any degrees or all that i have a, a course that i went to went through it's called course careers it's in the description um coupon code for you you can do payment plan get started for a hundred dollars break into tech in like 30 days i did it in two weeks but anyway let me continue and i did tech sales let me continue and so I told a lady that I would be moving in in six months. And she was like, oh, well, okay. Just brushing me off and crap. And guess what? The Lord, the story is really long, but the Lord provided me with a brand new job in tech and desktop support. It was just, the way he did it was, it just blows my mind. And I went back in six months. I worked that job for six months. I went back in six months. And I told her, I'm, I went back to those um, homes six months after I started my new job. And I probably started my new job in like two weeks. It was crazy. The minute, like as soon as I left those homes. Started grinding, 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 applications, all that. It was, it's a crazy story how I got it though, because it was through a recruiter. It was just crazy. 
And in two weeks, got my job. Six months after that, started my new job, I went back. But this time I went back with a realtor. And I said, hi, I said, my name is Paris. I came to look at the homes six months ago. I said, but I'm back and I'm looking to put the house under contract today. And this time I had the big balls, the big balls with me. I had my realtor with me, boy, you can't tell me nothing. And she was like, oh, what do you do? Are you a nurse or something? I was like, no, I work in tech. Cause I was uh, 21, putting, my, putting a brand new house under contract. But I just, this should be a, some encouragement for those who look like they have rock bottom, but the Lord always turn, turn things around. But you have to have faith. If you don't have faith, the Lord ain't doing it. He ain't going to do it. You got to meet him halfway, boy. Faith as small as a mustard seed. All right. I'm about to get my food. <laughs> Bye.